Hi friends, in shear force and bending moment segment, we are considering one example where we would like to draw shear force and bending moment diagram that is SFD and BMD for the given beam. So, there is a beam AB given to us. So, end A of the beam is a hinge support while end B of the beam is the roller support. And there are forces of 100 Newton, 200 Newton, 300 Newton and 500 Newton are acting at point C, D, E, F as shown in the figure. So, our first step in order to find shear force and bending moment diagram is to draw free body diagram of this particular beam. You can see that at point A we have got hinge support and there is no inclined load acting on the beam. So, in that situation it will be having one single vertical support reaction at point A. Similarly, at point B also since it is a roller support there will be a single vertical support reaction acting at point B. So, you can see here the step one is to draw free body diagram and after that, we have to find the support reaction RA and RB. Okay. We have drawn the free body diagram over here. As you can see, this is the free body diagram and we have to find the support reaction for this particular beam. So, support reaction can be found by using condition of static equilibrium. So, by condition of static equilibrium. The condition of static equilibrium is summation of forces in the vertical direction that is F of Y, summation of FY equal to 0. Mind it, we are considering horizontal direction is X direction and the vertical direction is Y direction. Friends. Okay, so, summation of forces in the vertical direction is 0, summation of forces in horizontal direction equal to 0 and summation of moment of forces about any point on the beam equal to 0. You can take any point on the beam, but for, for simplicity we will consider moment about a point A or point B. You can take about A or B, any one. Okay. So, now as you can see from the figure, there is no horizontal force acting on the beam. So, there are no forces in the x direction. So, we can directly neglect this particular part that is summation of forces in x direction equal to 0. Okay. So, for us only this part that is summation of vertical forces is 0 and summation of moment about any particular point, moment of forces about any particular point on the beam equal to 0. So, we will start with this condition first by summation of forces in the vertical direction or y direction equal to 0. That means, we will take first Ra upward since I am going to consider sign convention friends. Upward forces taken as positive, upward forces will be positive and downward force will be taken as negative. So, we shall follow the sign convention for forces. Okay. Okay. So this is the sign convention we are going to use for forces. So, now we will have the Ra upward. So, it is positive friends. Ra is po positive because it is upward. This force is downward. So, negative. This force is again downward minus 200, this force is downward minus 300. Now, this one is downward, so it is minus 300. Okay, this is also downward, this is also downward, this is also downward, so it's minus 300. Then we have minus 500 again downward, and then RB is upward, so it is positive plus RB equal to 0. Okay, RB is upward, friends, so it is positive. You take now, if I simplify this particular equation, we will be getting RA is positive plus RB is also positive, they are in the left hand side, and this all negatives I'll transfer to the right hand side, so 100, 200, 300 plus 300, 600 plus 500, 1100. So, it is going to be 1100 Newtons. So, this is R equation 1. Now, we will take the third condition that is summation of moment of forces about any point. So, we will consider point A and we are going to assume beam is hinge at this particular point A we can say. Okay. So, let us do that friends. So, by next condition that is summation of moment of forces about point A equal to 0. From this condition what you will get is very interesting. Now, if you look at here, R is acting at the same point. So, because of R A, there is no rotation of the beam. So, R A will not cause any moment. Okay. So, R A into 0 actually distance is 0. This part we do not have to consider. Okay. Then we will have this 100 Newton into distance 1. So, 100 Newton will rotate the beam about point A in the clockwise sense like this. Okay. So, because of that beam will rotate in clockwise direction. So, 100 into 1 will be the clockwise moment. So, it is plus 100 into 1. Actually, this we do not have to write because R is acting the same point. So, we can avoid writing R A into 0. So, it is only 100 into 1 clockwise friends. It is clockwise moment. Then again plus 200 into 2 because the distance of this particular force from point A is 200 and its value is 200 Newton because distance of this particular force from point A is 2. So, 200 into 2 again it is clockwise. Then again plus you can do it 300 into 3 clockwise moment. So, it is positive. 500 into 4 again clockwise moment friends and R B will cause anti-clockwise rotation something like this. Okay. So, Rb will be minus. So, this particular moment is going to be minus negative that is minus Rb and its distance from point A is going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 means 5 meters. Okay. So, into 5 this is anti-clockwise that is why I have taken negative and that is equal to 0 as you can see from here. Okay. No issues. Now, if you simplify this equation, you will be getting a very simple outcome that is 5 Rb equal to now it is 100 plus 400 that is 500 and then 3 into 3 900. So, 500 plus 900, uh, 1400 and 5 into 4 is going to be 2000. 
so 1400 plus 2000 is going to be 3400 okay so this is going to be 3400 if you simplify it further 34 divided by 5 will be getting rb so the value of rb will come as 680 newtons so we have got the value of rb is 680 newtons if you substitute this value of rb in equation 1 you will get the value of ra so substituting the value of rb in equation 1 to get value of ra so that will give you ra plus instead of rb we will put 680 newton that is equal to 1100 newtons okay so that if you simplify you will get ra equal to 1100 minus 680 so you will be getting the value as 430 so you will get from here the value is 420 newtons so here we are able to find the support reaction ra as 420 newton and value of rb is 680 newtons okay so our first step to obtain the support reaction is completed okay so now we'll go for the second step that is to obtain the shear forces at salient points so let's do it that is step two to calculate shear forces at salient points so salient points are basically the points at which the forces are acting on the beam so point a c d e f and b all these points are salient points okay so we'll start from left to right so we shall consider a section just before point A and then we will consider a section just after point A like that we will proceed further here C also just before C then after C before D after D before E then after point E then before F after point F and before B after point B. So we will be moving from left to right and like this across where force is acting we will calculate the shear forces ok. So friends here we are going to follow sign convention. So the sign convention is very interesting if you have a plane and your shear force is acting in the upward direction to the left of this particular plane so this particular shear force is taken as positive and similarly if you have a plane and your shear force is acting at downward direction okay at the left side of this particular plane then this is taken as negative shear force similarly if you have a plane like this your shear force is acting at the right hand side of the plane and it is acting downward so it is taken as positive like that please remember here your shear force is at left hand side of this particular plane and here shear force is at right hand side of the particular plane so whatever effect this particular shear force will cause same effect this particular shear force will also cause so both are taken as positive now the next case here i'll draw if you have a plane like this friends and your shear force is acting upward so it is acting at right hand side of this particular plane so that is also taken as negative but for us we are going to follow this particular condition okay so here if you see we are going to take a plane and in both the cases our forces are shear forces are at the left hand side of this particular plane okay okay we will not take right hand side condition because we are going to move from left hand side to right hand side like this okay so what we will do we will first start take plane here and if you see there is no shear force act in this side of this particular plane so so if i take plane here the left hand side of this particular plane is this particular shear force r is acting this we will consider okay so like that we will proceed so we will say shear force so i am taking point a so just left of point a so if you see here when your plane is just left hand side of this particular point a in this situation we don't have any shear force here there is no shear force here okay so it is going to be 0 newton the second case is friends when your plane is just right of this particular point a so when plane is just right of point a so in that case if you see now this particular force r is acting so this is the case friends plane and the upper force so it is taken as positive that is plus 420 newtons okay so like that we will be moving our plane from from point a to point b and we'll see how the shear forces are varying so now if you go here your plane is just left of point c in that case only this force r is there in the picture there is no other force coming so we'll write down shear force just when your plane is just left of the point c so in that case so if you see the plane the plane has only crossed this particular force r a that is 420 newton so plus 420 newton as per sign convention and if i just cross the plane on that side so now it has two forces one is this ra you can see here it has covered the force ra which is upward and then this is downward force okay so in this case as per this sign convention friends this upward is going to be positive and this downward is going to be negative so it is going to be friend just right of point c so it is going to be first this force is covered that is plus 420 then minus 100 which is this one 320 newtons so we are able to cover point c now shear force at point d but we will keep our plane first just left of the point d and then just right of the point d so when you are when you keep your plane here it will cover this force 
that is 100 newtons downward and this force that is ra upward okay so upward is going to be positive and downward is going to be negative so just left of the point d and the next will be just right of the point d so when it is just left of the point d only these two forces are there so 400 minus 100 that is 420 minus 100 okay and that is going to be same value friend 320 no change but when it crosses it this will come into the picture so already this side we had up to here we had 320 now when it crosses here this minus 200 will come into the picture so it is going to be 120 newton now the next step would be the point e where your plane is here so when plane is here the same condition there is no other forces coming into the picture okay whatever was for this particular plane same is for this particular plane so we can say shear force just left of point e there is going to be same case because there is no other force has come into the picture so we can say it is same as this one that is one two zero newton and if you go just right just right of the point e so it just crosses over and it goes to just right of this so this particular force will come into the picture which is downward which is minus so minus 300 will come already up to here it was so one two zero is positive then minus 300 will come which is acting at this point so minus 300 this is going to be 180 newtons okay so up till here we got minus 180 so if you keep your plane here friends just before point f the same value will be there the previous value that is minus 180 but if you cross it up to here this another force that is minus 500 will come into picture okay so that i'll write here shear force at just left of point f that is going to be same as this one because there is no other force has come into the picture okay so it is minus 180 newton and when you go just right of point f so minus 180 will be as it is and then additional force minus 500 is coming this is going to be minus 680 newtons okay now the last point that is b so shear force just left of point b that is same as the previous value what we got here friends from plane when plane comes up to here so when plane is just before b the same value would come there is no other force coming into it so we can say same as minus 680 the next point is very important when you cross this plane to right of this particular point b so this other force will come into the picture which is rb 680 which is upward positive so just right if you do so it is going to be already minus 680 and then this plus 680 friends that is equal to 0 newton so friends we are able to get shear forces at salient points okay so next part is that is part 3 is to calculate bending moments at salient points so again all these points are the salient points and we'll try to calculate bending moment at those points so friends you can see here we have drawn the free body diagram and now we'll try to find out the bending moments at the salient point that is a c d e f okay so you can go from left to right or right to left your wish in both cases we have same sign convention i'll tell you what is sign convention first okay so we have got a sign convention so as per this sign convention if your beam is bending like this which is called as sagging of the beam okay so such kind of bending will be called as positive bending moment this will be called as positive bending moment okay and similarly if your beam is bending like this friends which is called as hogging of the beam so if your beam is bending in this shape so this is called as hogging and this moment will be negative bending moment okay so you have to see the shape of the beam okay and accordingly we can decide whether the bending moment is positive or bending moment is negative so let's do it first so i'll start from point a so if i start from point a i'm moving from left to right okay so i'm going from left to right so i'm here suppose so when you are just here at point a we can say the bending moment at point a okay if you keep your plane at point c we call bending moment at point c like that we'll proceed further okay so bending moment at point a so as you can easily decide that there is no force left hand side of this particular plane when your plane is here so bending moment caused by the forces will be zero this is going to be zero newton meters so now we'll keep our plane at point c so bending moment at point c in that case friends we have only this particular force that is ra coming into the picture when you keep your this point fixed and you apply this particular force you'll see your beam is going to bend like this this is a kind of sagging bending moment you can see okay this shape is coming so sagging bending moment so it will be positive so it will be positive bending moment so that is going to be ra that is 420 into 1 so positive 420 into 1 that is equal to 420 newton meter okay and here your beam is bending like this friends your beam has bent like this kindly remember since beam has bent like this it is taken as positive okay now we'll go for bending moment when you keep a plane at point d so there are two forces coming one is ra so ra will ra will bend beam like this and another force coming is 100 newton so it is going to bend beam like this okay 
so this will cause the first ra will cause sagging moment while while this particular force 100 newton will cause hogging moment that is negative so we'll do that at point d so first this ra into this distance that is 2 meters it is positive 420 into 2 minus 100 into 1 so if you simplify this you'll be getting 840 minus 100 and that is going to be 740 newton meters 420 into 2 was causing sagging that is taken as positive and this was causing hogging that is taken as negative so overall value is 740 that is we can say sagging anyway now we'll talk about bending moment at point e so we are going to keep beam fixed here and we'll see so there is a force 100 newton 200 newton and 300 newton so the forces which are going to cause moment at this particular point are ra that is 420 newton then 100 so ra will cause sagging of the beam like this okay this 100 newton will cause hogging of the beam like this this 200 will also cause hogging so they are going to be negative fine so we'll do one by one so bending moment at point e due to 420 will be 420 into distance is 3 plus so it is plus 420 into 3 it is positive again minus this will be causing hogging so 100 into 2 minus 200 into 1 if you simplify this you'll be getting value so this value 420 into 3 is going to be 1260 minus then 100 into 2 will be 200 then again 200 into 1 that is going to be minus 200 if you simplify you'll get 1260 minus 400 that is going to be 860 newton meters so we got bending moment at point e due to these forces okay because we are considering our plane at point e so we got value of bending moment at point e so we have taken a plane at point e and then these forces that is ra 100 newton 200 newton are going to cause bending moment at point e so that value we have got 860 newton meter now we will take a plane at point f or when you take a point f so the bending moment will be caused by this force this force this force and this force so as it is very much clear this force ra will bend the beam like this okay because we are finding bending moment at point f so we are holding beam at this particular point and allowing these forces to act okay so your beam is going to bend in this way due to application of force ra so this is going to be sagging of the beam similarly due to application of 100 newton your beam is going to bend like this about point e due to application of force 200 also beam is going to bend like this and due to 300 also beam is going to bend like this so all these three bendings of beams are basically hogging these are negative bending moments and this is positive bending moment okay so accordingly we'll do so write down the values of bending moment at point f so due to application of ra the beam is bending like this so it is ra that is 420 into distance from point f so it is 1 1 1 that is 4 meter you'll get that is positive bending moment now due to 100 newton beam is hogging so it is it is going to be negative bending moment friends so it is minus 100 into distance from this point to this point is 3 meters similarly this is also causing negative bending moment 200 newton so 200 into distance is 2 meters this 300 newton also causing bending moment negative so 300 into distance is 1 meter and this 500 is acting at the same point f so it will not cause any bending moment because distance is 0 so that will not write so if you calculate this so 4 to 0 into 4 is going to be 1680 minus this value is going to be 300 this value is going to be 400 and this again is 300 friends so if you calculate the entire value that is going to be 680 newtons now we shall calculate bending moment at point b here so all these forces that is ra 100 newton 200 newton 300 newton 500 newton are going to cause bending moment at point b because we are going from left to right as we are moving right more and more forces are coming to the picture okay so now we'll find bending moment at point b this force also will come into the picture okay that is 500 newton so ra 100 newton 200 newton 300 newton 500 newton they all are going to cause bending moment at point b okay so we will do it one by one and see how much value is coming over here please remember at this fixed end the bending moment has to be zero okay so after application of all these forces the bending moment at this particular point will have to be zero that is a very important check so if it comes zero then means our calculation is correct so let's do it so the first bending moment will be caused by ra so as we have already seen this will bend the beam in this way in this fashion that is going to be sagging this kind of thing so it is going to be positive friends so it is ra that is so it is 420 value of ra is 420 newton so 420 into its distance from point b is uh, 5 meters you can see here so it is 5 this is acting downwards so it will bend beam in this fashion this also will bend this fashion and here also like this so all these are negative bending moment because they are sagging the beam okay so let's write down for 100 newton so minus 100 and its distance from point b is 4 meters so into 4 
is 200 again negative friends and its distance from b is 3 meters minus 300 again 300 and distance is 2 meter minus 500 and distance is 1 meter from point b so if you do the calculation this will turn out to be 420 into 5 will turn out to be 2100 then this is minus 400 this one is minus 600 this is again 600 minus 600 this is minus 500 friends so if you calculate this 4 and 6 1000 600 and 500 is again 1100 so 1000 plus 1100 is 2100 so plus 2100 and minus 2100 is going to be 0 newton meter so the bending moment at point b we got 0 newton meter so this way we have calculated the bending moments at all salient points of the beam okay so salient points are in this particular case are where the forces are acting so we have got the bending moment at salient points as well as shear forces at salient points now we are going to plot the shear forces and bending moments on the beam okay so that is the final step so this is step 4 friends we are going to plot shear force and bending moment diagram so we have drawn the beam here we would like to plot shear force and bending moment diagram on this particular beam so we have taken the lines along the so we have, we have drawn the vertical lines at point a c d e f and b so along this vertical lines will be representing the variation of shear forces and bending moments so we are going to represent the variation of shear forces over here this is going to be shear force diagram and uh, over here i am going to represent the bending moments so it is going to be bending moment diagram okay like this so first of all we would like to see what is the shear force at point a at point a both the shear forces that is just left to the point a and just right to the point a will be coming at this particular point if you remember the shear force at a we had two values the just left was 0 and just right was 4 to 0 newtons okay and shear force at point c just left was 420 just right was 320 so like that all the values i am writing here so friends these are the values of shear forces at salient points similarly also we'll have the values of bending moments these are shear forces this is just left just right to the point now we also have the value of bending moments so bending moment at point a was 0 okay friends so we got okay friends i have just listed down the values of all shear forces and bending moments of the point just to draw it okay you need not to draw it again okay just to represent here i have again listed it down so that we can easily plot it now if you see the variation of shear forces at point a there are two values of shear forces coming at point a just left and just right that is 0 and 4 to 0 so both will be plotted at this particular point a so 0 will come here the value is going to be 0 here friends so here it is 0 so i'll say 0 newtons and 4 to 0 will come positive somewhere here so i'll write down 4 to 0 newtons at this point now when you go to the point c that is this point just left is 4 to 0 means same value would continue here right so here it is going to come as 4 to 0 and then it comes to 3 to 0 so it comes down somewhere here let's say 3 to 0 so it is 4 to 0 newtons okay and here it comes to be 3 to 0 newtons okay so this is 3 to 0 newtons like that so we can plot the variation from here to here it is going to be like this straight and then it comes horizontal line because the value is same and then it comes down to 3 to 0 value now from here point c to point d it goes 3 to 0 straight so it goes like this straight you can see and then it comes to 1 to 0 so it comes to somewhere here that is 1 to 0 here down okay this one so it will come down this way okay now from 1 to 0 when it goes to point e it also here also it is 1 to 0 friends okay so it goes straight to point e 1 to 0 newton as you can see so we can draw a straight line from here to here 1 to 0 but from 1 to 0 at point e it goes from 1 to 0 to minus 180 so it comes to negative side which is minus 180 here so at this point it is minus 180 newtons so it is going to come down from here to here straight from positive to negative like this now at point f you can see here at point f just left it is minus 180 so it will continue up to here that is minus 180 again so we'll draw a straight line from this point to this point straight line now when it goes to just right it becomes minus 680 friends so somewhere down it will come minus 180 to something like minus 680 so here it is come as minus 680 newtons and then at point b it goes again minus 680 here also minus 680 friends so we will draw a straight line from here to here so first it goes from minus 180 to minus 680 then it continues to minus 680 and at point b if you see just right it is 0 newton so it will come to here so a straight line comes here 
the value becomes 0 Newton. So mind it, I have not drawn the graph as per scale. This is approximate variation. You can draw with the scale also. And if you draw it like this also, there is no issue. It is acceptable. So now if you see here, this shows the variation of shear forces. Okay. So this shows the variation of shear forces, friends. So these are the positive shear forces which are above the axis line and these are the negative shear forces as you can see from here. So above is the positive, these are all positive and this is negative shear force. So we have got the variation of shear forces along the beam, okay, like this. Now we can also plot the variation of bending moments. So as we can see from here, the bending moment at this particular point is going to be 0 Newton meter. Now variation at point C is 4 to 0. Okay, let's say it is this point. This is 4 to 0 Newton meter. This is corresponding to point C. Point D it is 740 friends. This is let's say 740 Newton meter corresponding to point D and point uh, E it is 860. So let's say this is 860 Newton meter. This is 860. Okay. And then again point F it is 680. So it is coming somewhere here. 680 Newton meter and point B 0 Newton meter. Okay. So this particular graph shows the variation of bending moments. Okay. Now we'll connect these points. So we'll connect this to this. Then these two points. These are all straight lines friends. Then here to here and then here to here. So this is the variation of bending moment as you can see. So we are getting only positive bending moment in this particular case. There is no negative bending moment as you can see from the figure. Okay. These are all positive bending moments. So like this, we can plot the variation of shear forces and bending moments. And this is called as shear force and bending moment diagram. Okay. We will see some more examples similar to it to understand the concept. Okay. Thank you very much.